that's always a problem. Every year we sail along quite happily and then we reach the letter X. Now, as far as we know, there is nowhere in Britain that begins with an X. So, as always, we've had to use a little poetic licence. Gerald Main has been to Norman Cross in Cambridgeshire. You might imagine this Cambridgeshire landscapes remained pretty much unchanged forever, but you'd be wrong. 200 years ago, this was the site of a mini town, full to busting with 7,000 men, all a long, long way from home. In 1797, Norman Cross became the site of the world's first purpose-built prisoner of war camp. Britain and Napoleon's France were going at it hammer and tongues, and thousands of French and Dutch captives needed somewhere to sit out the wars. Today, there are lumps and bumps in the field, but nothing to truly reveal the part. There are maps and drawings from the early 19th century, but it takes 21st century computer graphics to bring the past to life. It was uh, basically a sort of a squashed octagon in shape, the prison was, with a, uh, a prison wall full of wood and then rebuilt in brick, a ditch surrounding the whole affair, and divided into four quarters or quadrants. Uh, each of those had four caserns or barrack blocks in, each of which had 500 men, usually sleeping in hammocks. Some prisoners survived the wars, 1,700 didn't. But where are their remains? It's a bit of a mystery. There are references to a cemetery over the other side of the A1, uh, and there's been a couple of archaeological digs to try and find where this might be, so far unsuccessfully. Uh, it doesn't appear that the new road cut through it, which is the main thing, so somewhere out there is still, still that cemetery. A memorial commemorating the camp used to stand by the A1 with a bronze eagle perched on top. Twelve years ago, it wasn't so much a case of the bird having flown as the bird having been nicked. But who would have done that? I'm afraid we really have no idea. Um, various theories flew about at the time, you know, ranging from uh, pure vandalism to the fact that the column might have been damaged in order to get the eagle down so that it could be stolen to order, perhaps thinking it was a, a priceless antique. We just don't know, I'm afraid. A £20,000 appeal has been launched to replace the eagle a price worth paying for the proud locals. This is a very historic place. Uh, Norman Cross was the centre of local government in Anglo-Saxon times, it's in Doomsday Book, and the day we lost the, the eagle was very, very traumatic, and we want it back. The project to restore the eagle has attracted the attention of the renowned wildlife artist Sally Arnup. She may be the sculptress commissioned to replace the big bird. 200 years ago, the prisoners crafted intricate models made from straw and the bones left over from their rations, which they sold at the prison gate. They really needed money because although they had some food, it wasn't really enough and they didn't have money for medicine and clothing. And some of them were here for quite a long time. Bone carving was good business. Pretty things for the ladies and executive toys for the boys. Best of all, that symbol of the revolution and liberty, Madame Guillotine. It's amazing what you can do with thyme, chicken bones and the odd lamb chop. Gerald Main, BBC Look East, Norman Cross.